Hey guys, welcome to Jayheart Model Works. In this video, we're going to finish up the engine bay for the Revell 70 Dodge Challenger for the Blue Ox Model Shop Street Machine Group build. We need to run our heater hose and our ignition coil. We're going to install a 3D printed Optima battery and the washer fluid reservoir since we cut the kit parts out of the body in the body prep video. We need to take care of the master cylinder and the radiator as well. But before we can do any of that, we have to get the glass in, finish off the interior, and get the body on the chassis. So you go get some snacks. I'm gonna get this camera flipped around and we can get to work. All right guys, first thing we wanna do is cut the headlights out of the rest of the glass and put them back for safekeeping. Next, we wanna mask off the glass, starting with these side windows. We wanna put some tape down. And then we're gonna mark right along this crease. We'll then remove the masking and cut along the line and reinstall the mask. I don't really care for cutting inside the glass if I can help it. Now for the rear window, we're gonna go ahead and use a permanent marker on the glass. We will then lay some tape over that and then trace over the lines we made with our permanent marker. Once again, we're gonna remove the masking tape and cut out our mask. And then we're going to reapply that mask on the inside following the lines that we made earlier. Now, even though we are installing the mask backwards technically, it should still fit within that same space without too much of an issue. Once we have the mask in place, we're gonna go around the outside marks that we made with some isopropyl alcohol, and that will clean the permanent marker right off. For the front windshield, we're just gonna put our tape in place and then mark along the crease, just like we did with the side windows. And then we'll cut and reinstall the mask. Now we are putting down a lot of tape, pulling it off and reapplying it. So when you are pulling the tape off, be careful with how you pull it off so that you're not putting a lot of strain against the plastic as you can create cracks or flat out break the windshield. This kit has four sizable ejector pin marks and they are pretty rough. We wanna take a sander and we're gonna sand these down so that it's fairly smooth. We aren't going for polished or perfect. You'll see why in a little bit, but we wanna make sure there are no protruding plastic or rough raised edges. Now I guess to save space or something on the sprue, Ravel decided to cut a huge hole in the roof glass and put the headlight lenses in there. I don't really know why they did it, but I don't care for that hole at all. So we're gonna try and do something about that. We're gonna start by masking the entire area off with some masking tape. Once we have that whole area masked off, we're gonna mark along the ridge lines again with our permanent marker. And we are once again going to remove that mask and cut it out. Instead of putting this mask back on the glass, we're going to apply it to a thin sheet of acetate. The thinnest styrene I have is three thousandths of an inch. This is a lot thinner, it's a lot more flexible, it will conform better, and we can just cut it with scissors like a sheet of paper. 
Ignore those marks for right now. This is attempt number two. I'm learning as I go. So now we're gonna make some marks about every 12 to 13 millimeters. That's gonna give us, I believe, four, maybe five sections. And we want to make the exact same marks on the other side in the exact same spacing. Now, as I mentioned, this acetate sheet is very flexible. We're going to place our metal ruler along the marks that we made on each side, and we're going to bend this up. We're going to make a small crease, not like a really sharp one, just a slight crease. Then move to the next mark and bend it again. We're gonna do that for each of our marks. The important thing is that they need to be very straight. We're gonna lay this down for a bit of a test fit and I think you can see where we're going with this. So in the spray booth, we sprayed the inside of our glass as well as the inside of the curved acetate with some Mr. Surfacer 1500 gray as that's what we're using for the base color for our interior. And now we wanna line up and mark the hole for our mirror. We're gonna drill that hole out and then we wanna sand the outside unpainted part of the acetate with some sandpaper. This will create thousands of rough scratches that will help our CA glue adhere better. Moving away from the headliner for a bit, we need to apply some bare metal foil to the bottom of our windshield as there is a metal trim as well as our molded in wiper blades down there. This is just typical bare metal foil process. Apply the foil, burnish it down really well. We'll cut the excess off the bottom using the edge of the glass as a guide. Then we want to cut along the trim and the wipers. Since we are cutting directly on the glass, we want to go nice and slow. Don't slip off and possibly cut or damage the glass. This requires very little pressure, especially if you're using a brand new scalpel blade. Once we're done cutting it, we're gonna burnish it back down again and remove the excess. We can then clean any residual adhesive with some IPA and either a soft cloth or a cotton bud. Time to glue our glass in. I'm using some Bob Smith Super Gold Plus Clear Safe CA glue on the two locating pins. We then wanna slide our glass in place, not getting any glue on it. The front lip needs to go over this lip in the center of the body, but the two outer tabs go under the lips on the outside to help lock it in place. We're gonna press and hold till it sets. And then for some added hold, I'm gonna add some more glue to the inside edge of the big hole in the center of the glass. Now to install the headliner. We want to fit it in place and line up the hole we drilled for our mirror with the hole in the glass. We then want to start gluing it in place once again using some Super Gold Plus CA glue and applying the glue to the glass on the other end. Now we're using the Super Gold Plus because it won't fog up our glass. Once that's set in place, we'll then add some more glue to the sides and the front, and we're gonna glue the headliner the rest of the way down. I'm applying the glue one section at a time until I get it fully into place where I want it. Now sped up like this, it looks like I'm applying a lot. I'm applying tiny little drops as I don't want this to ooze out everywhere and get on our glass or on our body. Which reminds me, check, clean, and wash your hands often. We do have some gaps on the side. We are going to very carefully apply tiny drops of CA glue to the inside 
and very carefully press them into place, again trying not to ooze glue everywhere. I know this is supposed to be about the engine bay, but half the video is about the interior, but we gotta get all this done before we can actually work on the engine bay. We got a lot going on in here, but we're wrapping it up, starting with these sun visors. Now I designed and 3D printed these to match the OEM Dodge sun visors. These are different from the ones I've been using that I designed for the 240Z build. I have added these sun visors to that download on my Colts page though. So if you already bought the old sun visor file, you can go download it again and get these sun visors for free. We're just gonna add a little bit of CA glue to the underside of the sun visors. I like to use a little bit of blue tack to hold them and set them in place until that glue grabs just enough that we can give the blue tack a little twist to get it to let go. And then we'll just use our tweezers to move it into position before the CA can fully set. And before we set our rear view mirror in place, we're going to add a little bit of bare metal foil to it. We'll then just trim very carefully along that inside edge. and peel off the excess. And then we can glue it into place. When you glue it in place, make sure you give it a little bit of a twist to angle the rear view mirror slightly towards the driver. Rear view mirrors never point straight back. And of course, I 3D modeled and printed up a dome light. You can also make these using some plastic rod, just sand a rounded bevel around the edges and maybe add some bare metal foil around the sides, but I have the printer so why not? Now we do want to sand the bottom gluing surface of this so that it is perfectly smooth. I may have a set of these up for sale on my Colts 3D page with this and a rectangular version. If it's not up yet, I will have it posted up very soon. We're just going to put this on a little bit of blue tack. Add a Tiny drop of CA glue. I got a little bit too much there, so we're gonna remove the excess with a cotton bud. And then we're gonna carefully set this into place in the center of this back section back here. Reference photos show that it should line up right around with the edge of the windows. All right, that is it. The interior section is done. Okay, I lied, the interior's almost done. The very last thing to do is to carefully insert the tub so we don't hit and knock anything off like our dome light or our mirror. Press it down on these two little mounting nubs. Apply a little bit of CA glue. With the tub in place, we can now mate the chassis. I find it easiest to insert the rear end of the body. Then you can lay the chassis down and slide the front to one side and tuck the corner of the wheel well in under the body. And then when you slide it back, it only takes a slight tug on the body to slip the other side into place. We'll then lift the front end just a touch. There are two mounting points on the underside of the body where it meets the chassis. Apply a tiny drop of CA to each of these and press and hold the chassis in place till it sets. I'm just gonna flip it over and set it down and I'm gonna hold it in place while I make sure that the body sits even on all four of the wheels. All right guys, we are finally really in the engine bay and we're gonna start with some heater hoses and some 26 gauge hookup wire. Now we're gonna start by cutting a couple of pieces. They're a little bit longer than the engine bay. And using some CA glue, we're going to glue each of these in place to the holes that we drilled during the engine video. I did design and print up some heater hose retaining clips. These are essentially just figure eights with the holes a little larger than our wires. We want to slide each of the wires through the holes and then slide the first clip into place near the block, but not all the way down. We're gonna place another one about halfway down, pretty much right where that hose meets up with the fender. 
and we're going to glue that into place with some CA glue. And unfortunately, we are zoomed in and out of frame. All right, next we want to measure our hoses till they reach the firewall and cut off the excess. Now, during the body prep video, I forgot to drill out the firewall. So what I did instead was I made this third clip with a flat back on it. So we're just going to glue it into place on the hose ends, and then we're gonna add some glue to that flat backing. And we can press that flat backing right up against the firewall and it will look like it terminates smoothly into a connector. It may not be perfectly realistic, but it does look a lot cleaner than just ending the hose there. The last thing we want to do with the heater hose is kind of bend and press it into place where we want it to be. And then we're going to add a little bit of glue on the fender right where that clip presses up against it to hold it into place. And now we have our heater hoses run together and with those little clips they run together like they should on the car. Next up is our ignition coil. I think this is one of my designs. I can't remember. It's really old. It's not up for sale. We are going to measure where it meets up with our coil wire and cut off the excess. Then we're going to take another one of these Protex spark plug boots and we're going to cut that roughly in half. We will then force that onto the end of our ignition coil. We'll add a bit of glue to the end of our coil wire. And then we will fight to get that wire into the boot, which You've got my big head in the way because I couldn't really see what I was doing. We then want to add a little bit of CA glue to the back of the coil and we're going to set that in place. And I put that just kind of over where the heater hoses hit the firewall so that it kind of covers that up a little. We're going to move on to our Optima battery. I got this on Colts 3D, but I don't remember who from. The nice thing about it though is that the top is separate from the body, making it much easier to paint. Now, using some Vallejo paints and a mechanical pencil, we want to paint the red and black terminal caps for the bolt-down terminals. They're going to be unused as we're using the top post terminals. I also got the battery terminal connectors on Colts as well, and when I was setting up the battery to print, I just added the connectors onto the posts and printed it all up as one piece. And we're going to go ahead and brush paint those with some Vallejo Silver. Now back when I used to scratch build Optima batteries, I made some decals for them, so we just printed up some of those as part of my custom decal sheet and we're going to apply our logos like we would any other decal. However, for this round one, we're going to use this incredibly overpriced hole punch. Only Micromark sells it, and while it is really expensive, it works really well. You just line your you know, circular decal up where you want it, put the little metal pin in, and smack it into place, and it just you know, punches out a perfect circle every time. It's great for doing small things that are just too small for the big display circle cutter to cut. You know, stuff like this where it's already printed and designed and you don't want to miss it and cut too much. And these are on white decal sheets, so we want to cut as close as possible to the design and then we're going to lay our top decal down as well. Most of you probably already know how to set decals. Most of you are probably better than me at decals. I hate decals. I have no tips here. Now, before I painted these, I went ahead and drilled the holes right at the end of the terminals for gluing in our wire. So I'm just really making sure that all, there's no paint down in there so our wire will glue in. We're going to add a little bit of CA glue, run the red wire into our positive, and cut that. We're going to glue our black wire into our negative. And I like to give the wires a bit of a twist, twist them up together, makes them easier to run. 
We're gonna add a little bit of glue to the battery shelf, and these are way too long, so I'm trying to hold the end in place so that it's not waving around and getting glue everywhere. And then we're going to carefully set our battery into place and hold it down till it sets. Now because that runs up to the top of the engine bay, we want to test fit the hood and make sure the hood's gonna sit flat. You're gonna see me test fit that hood a lot through the rest of this video. So this is a cool little bit of detail. We're gonna run out a piece of electrical tape here and cut this off. We're then gonna cut a tiny little sliver off the end of that electrical tape. We're gonna take that little sliver of a black electrical tape, we're gonna lay that on top of our battery, and we're going to run one end down to the bottom of the battery tray, and then the end that's closer to the fender, we're gonna tuck in back behind the battery right after we cut off the excess, and it's gonna look like we have a little battery retaining strap there. During the body prep video, we cut out the molded in washer fluid reservoir, and now we're going to replace it with a 3D printed one from Blackbox STL. We want to drill a hole in the front and glue in some black wire to look like hose. This is, I think, 30 gauge, 30 or 32. Now the 3D file comes with a cool little cap, which we paint in black, and we're going to glue that into place as well. You always want to use CA glue for 3D printed parts. Uh, we need to get that lined up so that it sits straight. Then after cutting it off the supports, we're gonna add some glue to the bottom and set that into place on the little shelf we made for that as well. And again, test fit, test fit, test fit, because anything that interferes with this hood will be a problem. Once we have everything in place, we're just gonna tuck the hose underneath our heater hoses and let that disappear into the engine bay. And that looks good. So the original plan was to cut off the kit's master cylinder from the brake booster and use the kit brake booster for our 3D printed Willwood style master cylinder. This is after all a street machine slash resto mod style build. And we have modded the brakes by adding four wheel Brembo disc brakes. That was until I saw the gaping hole in the bottom of the brake booster that I tried for a half hour to fill. So instead, I 3D modeled up my own brake booster. It is very similar in proportion to the kit's brake booster. I think it is a little cleaner and better defined. It's better shaped. It does have the same rectangular mount in the same place on the back. And this one already has a hole molded in to match up with our 3D printed master cylinder. Then I thought, it's a resto mod. So what if we instead painted one in anodized candy purple? I wasn't really sure, so I asked both Chris from CD Scale Models and Mitchell from Insomnia Hobbies. Both are my solid Mopar guys. I expected at least one of them to say black, as that's the OEM Mopar part color. They both were adamant on the purple, so purple it is. We will add a tiny bit of glue to the mounting hole in the center and put our master cylinder in place. We need to make sure it is straight up and down and in line with the mounting rectangle on the back. We also have to be careful as the master cylinder is crazy fragile. We'll then add some glue to the firewall mount point and install the assembly in place. This rectangle in back should just slide right into the slot on the firewall. But of course everything's a little trickier once you get glue on it, so we have to fiddle with it a little. We 3D printed a really cool radiator. The kit radiator did not have a lower radiator hose port and it had a huge fan shroud on it that would keep me from running an electric fan. This one has a separate radiator cap. It has two electric fans. And a really nice electric fan shroud. We're going to start by adding a little glue to the end of our radiator cap, and then we will glue that into its position on top of the radiator. Ignore the electric fan. The footage did not turn out, and we will end up redoing that footage in a little bit. Next, we're going to take a piece of copper wire. We're going to snip this off here, and then we will line that up and bend it down to make our radiator overflow. We can then add a little bit of CA glue to the inside of the copper wire and glue that into place. And 
and once we have it set, we'll just trim off the excess at the bottom. Now, back to that electric fan shroud. We're going to start by drilling a hole in the top right corner of each of the round fan covers. We then want to cut two long pieces of black wire. I think this is 34 gauge. It might be 32. I'm not entirely certain what I used here. We're going to run a piece of wire into the hole, add some CA glue right along that top edge, and then we're going to use a toothpick to kind of press that wire down in the glue and hold it into place till it sets. And we're going to repeat that process for the other fan. Once the glue is set and the wires are secure, we're going to go ahead and twist them up into one long braided cord. We're then going to add some CA glue to the outside flat surfaces of the fan shroud. We're not going to put any into the circular openings where the fans go. We then want to add our fans in place. There's a little mounting nub on the top of each fan. They go into a hole in the center of each of the fan shroud openings. We then want to line the bottom of the fan shroud up with the bottom of that radiator grill and just fold it into place. Before we can get the radiator installed, we need to add the lower radiator hose. And for that, we're going to use some Protec 0.045 inch braided line in the matching hex fittings. First we want to get one of the fittings over the braided line which can be a little tricky. Then we're going to strip a small piece off of the end and add a little CA glue to the metal core and make sure to get a tiny bit of it on the ends of the braiding. That will lock the end of the braiding and keep it from fraying and it's going to hold our fitting as we push it to the very end of the line right up against the edge of the radiator. We're going to hold the end of the line with some pliers as we bend it over and press it snug against the radiator. Then we want to do a test fit to see where we need to cut the excess and how we want to bend the lower line so that we can position it against the engine later. We want to bend the line up and out a little bit and then we're going to cut the excess and press it back up against the radiator so that we can get it past our belts when we install it here in a minute. We're going to do a test fit and a trial of kind of repositioning that line just to see how we want to do it. I cannot tell you how important test fitting is. Once we're comfortable with that, we're going to remove the radiator. We're going to add some CA glue to the lower radiator support on the frame. And then we'll position the radiator back into place. Once we have it settled in, we want to lean the radiator back and use a pin to add a tiny bit of CA glue to the back of the upper radiator support. Then we'll press the radiator forward into place. With the radiator in, we can then just trim off the end of our electrical leads for our fans and tuck them off to disappear into the engine bay. With the radiator installed, we'll just come in from the bottom and we're going to bend our lower hose back into place so that it comes up against the engine. And you guessed it, we're going to test fit the hood for interference and it's good. So here's the kit's upper radiator hose, and honestly, I think with a little work, we could make this fit. But yeah, that ain't happening. After a great deal of fiddling and fighting, we managed to get two more fittings onto this braided line. Yes, we need two on this one. One for each end, because they're both visible. Getting these fittings on is honestly the hardest part of working with this braided line. We're going to trim off our end and add some glue. Again, make sure you get a little bit on the end of the braiding. We will then glue the braided line into the mount point on the engine and then push our fitting all the way down so that it covers up our glue point. Going to bend the braided line into place where it needs to line up for the radiator. We'll then mark where we need to cut it. We'll make absolutely certain our fitting gets on the end that we're going to be using. We're going to cut off the excess line, and then we're going to trim the end, but make absolutely certain you are holding it firmly. The last thing you want to do is rip this line out and have to start over. Guess who forgot to zoom the camera back out as he glued the line in place and moved the fitting into position? I think Charlie Mack did it. And that is going to wrap up the engine bay and this video. 
I really wanted to get the car finished this video, but there's just no way. We'd be looking at least at an hour long video, probably more. No one's really gonna sit through an hour long video. I won't even sit through my own video for an hour, so I'm not gonna make you guys do it. We are really close though. The engine bay is the last huge section. After that, it's just all the stuff around the outside of the car. We're talking, you know, bumpers, the front grille, headlights, taillights, turn signals, side mirrors, stuff like that. All that's gonna be wrapped up in the next one. One more test fit of that hood. Yep, everything still sits nice. All right, so yeah, everything should be wrapped up in the next video and we'll have our final reveal at the end of that. So it looks like we just got one more. Now on the 17th and 18th of August, I am taking a trip down to Austin. I'm going to go check out King's Hobbies. That is the store that I mentioned before where I pre-ordered the Gordon Murray T50 from Tamiya. That store, like I said, that store's down in Austin, which isn't really close. It's a two or three hour drive to get down there. But honestly, there's really not that much by way of hobby stores up here in Dallas. We've got Hobbytown USA, which there's a handful of those. Most of those have a very limited selection. They're mostly dedicated to RC. And the prices are pretty high there. The Hobby Town in Arlington, the Wild Bill store, has a fairly decent selection. The last time I was in there, again, prices are still a little steep. And then we've got Hobby Lobby. And honestly, there's nothing at Hobby Lobby that I want that I don't already have other than maybe the Foos pickup and the 29 Ford Roadster, I think it is. But yeah, other than those two, there's really nothing at Hobby Lobby that I really want. So me, Livy, and Carol are going to hop into an SUV and head down to Austin and possibly check out a new favorite local hobby store. That should be a fun family trip. I'm hoping to get the final video out before I head down there, but we've only got like two weeks left, so it's gonna be cutting it kind of close. As always guys, thanks for hanging out and building with me. I always appreciate you hanging out and watching the video, and I will catch you on the next one.